Have you ever wondered what happens behind the closed doors of a warden's meeting? Well, let's dive into that, shall we? The warden's meeting, an essential gathering within the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, or CDCR, is a key event where prison wardens across the state come together. Normally, this meeting is hinged on aligning objectives and addressing pressing issues within the prison system. But there's an intriguing twist this year. A veil of secrecy seems to be descending over the agenda of this upcoming meeting, with whispers of potentially sensitive topics being on the table. We're talking about staff disciplinary issues, prison closures, social media leaks, and the controversial failure of the so-called California model of rehabilitation. The CDCR, a department that oversees one of the world's largest and most complex prison systems, is no stranger to public scrutiny. The term transparency often echoes in public forums discussing the workings of the department, but ironically, it seems to be the very thing the department is shying away from behind the scenes. This upcoming warden's meeting could serve as a small-scale representation of the bigger problems the department is grappling with. It paints a picture of how the culture of secrecy and the lack of transparency could be affecting the system's internal operations as well as the public's trust in its leadership. Now let's dive a bit deeper into the hush-hush topics that are expected to be discussed. The closures of several prison facilities have been a major point of concern for employees, inmates and the public alike. Yet the reasons for these closures and the long-term strategy behind them remain somewhat shrouded in mystery. Then there's the issue of social media leaks. In a world where information spreads faster than wildfire, the department has been dealing with the fallout from various leaks of sensitive information. The response? A focus on controlling leaks rather than addressing the underlying issues revealed by them. The secrecy surrounding this meeting may serve as a reflection of the larger issues plaguing the department. It's a thought-provoking scenario, one that merits some serious conversation. So, let's keep digging, shall we? In recent years, California's prison system has seen significant changes, most notably the closures of several facilities. These closures have sparked concerns among employees, inmates and the public alike. The California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, or CDCR, has framed these closures as a response to a changing landscape of incarceration in California. They cite declines in prison populations and a shifting emphasis toward rehabilitation as the reasons behind these decisions. Yet the lack of transparency surrounding these closures raises questions. The CDCR has been less than forthcoming with details regarding the reasons for these closures and the long-term strategy behind them. What's driving these decisions? Is it truly a shift towards rehabilitation or is there more to it? Are the closures a result of budget cuts or perhaps a response to criticisms regarding prison overcrowding or conditions? Furthermore, how are these closures impacting the staff and inmates? What provisions are being made to ensure the welfare of those affected? And perhaps most importantly, what does this mean for the future of California's prison system? Unfortunately, without clear communication from the CDCR, these questions remain largely unanswered. The silence surrounding these decisions leaves room for speculation and uncertainty. Are these closures part of a silent restructuring of the prison system? Or could they be seen as a tactical retreat in the face of mounting public scrutiny and criticism? The secrecy only adds to the sense of unease. It fuels the perception that the CDCR is more interested in controlling the narrative than in addressing the root causes of these issues. It suggests a disconnect between public accountability and internal governance, and it undermines the public's trust in the department's leadership. In the end, transparency is not just about sharing information, it's about fostering trust, promoting accountability, and ensuring that decisions are made in the best interests of all stakeholders. Without clear answers, the public is left to speculate on the motives and implications of these closures. In the age of viral information, the CDCR has been grappling with the fallout from various social media leaks. In our technologically advanced era, information has a way of finding the light of day, often faster than organizations like the CDCR can contain it. These leaks have become a thorn in the CDCR's side, often revealing sensitive information such as internal communications. 
videos of incidents inside prisons or whistleblower revelations about staff misconduct and inmate treatment. These leaks are not just about the information they contain, but also about the stories they tell, the narratives they shape. They offer a rare look into the darker corners of the prison system, corners that official channels would often prefer to keep hidden. In doing so, they challenge the narratives that the CDCR presents to the public, narratives about the efficacy of its policies and the state of its institutions. The CDCR's response to these leaks has been to focus on controlling the narrative, on tightening the reins and preventing further breaches. The upcoming Wardens meeting is expected to tackle this issue head-on, with a focus on implementing stricter controls to prevent further leaks. But is this the right approach? While controlling the narrative is an understandable response, it also raises a fundamental question. Should the CDCR focus on preventing leaks, or should it address the underlying issues that these leaks reveal? After all, if there were no misconduct, no mistreatment, no dark corners to begin with, what would there be to leak? The CDCR's emphasis on secrecy over transparency, on control over accountability, suggests a worrying disconnect between public accountability and internal governance. It raises the question of whether the CDCR sees itself as a public servant, accountable to the people, or as a standalone entity, accountable only to itself. This is a question that the CDCR and its wardens must grapple with as they gather for their secretive meeting. They must decide whether they will continue to prioritise control and secrecy, or whether they will take the harder but arguably more necessary path of addressing the issues revealed by these leaks, of aligning their actions with their public rhetoric. The department's response suggests a worrying disconnect between public accountability and internal governance. The California model of rehabilitation was hailed as a paradigm shift. But has it lived up to its lofty promises? When introduced, it was touted as a revolutionary approach to incarceration, shifting the focus away from punishment and towards rehabilitation and reducing recidivism. The reality, however, has been a far cry from this utopian vision. The model promised to transform the state's prison system, replacing harsh punitive measures with a compassionate approach aimed at rehabilitation. It was supposed to shift the focus toward providing inmates with the skills and resources they need to reintegrate into society and lead productive lives post-incarceration. But the rollout of this model has been marred by numerous challenges, leaving many to question its effectiveness and viability. A closer look at the implementation of the California model reveals a glaring gap between the public rhetoric and the lived reality of inmates. Stories of overcrowded classrooms, underfunded programs and untrained staff have become all too common. Many inmates are still waiting to receive the promised rehabilitation services, with some even claiming that conditions have worsened under the new model. Furthermore, data on recidivism rates paints a grim picture. Despite promises of reduced reoffending, the rates remain stubbornly high. This not only raises questions about the effectiveness of the rehabilitation programs, but also casts a shadow over the CDCR's ability to deliver on its promises. The secrecy surrounding the warden's meeting only adds to the scepticism. If the California model was indeed delivering on its promises, wouldn't the department want to share these successes with the public? Instead, the lack of transparency and the growing divide between rhetoric and reality suggest a system struggling to fulfil its mandate. The failure of the California model serves as a stark reminder of the chasm between the CDCR's public image and its internal operations. It's a sobering reflection of a system that, despite its grand promises of reform and rehabilitation, continues to grapple with deeply ingrained issues of transparency, accountability and effectiveness.